perfect is the enemy of good. So said Voltaire, an 18th century French philosopher. But if we cycle forward to the 21st century, our problem is we drown in detail. We get so caught up in the statistics of conversion rates and click-through rates and sales conversion rates that we lose the clarity about what's actually going on in our funnel. In most businesses, you can ask the sales leader what their closure rates are, and they'll know. And you can ask marketing what their click-through rates are, or they'll know that too. But do either of them know what their click-to-revenue rates are? or what their dollars per inbound lead are generating by way of revenue? Often we don't because we're lost in the detail of our micro measurements. Today I'll show you how just four numbers can help you build a model of your funnel. And then I'll build a statistically valid model using those same four numbers. So there are just four numbers that we really need to have to be able to build a valid model. Do we know how long it takes to convert a lead to a sale? Well, of course we do. We can get it from your CRM. Importantly, though, don't look at all opportunities in the CRM. Only wins. We want to know how long it takes to move through the funnel when we win. Do we know what proportion of our leads eventually result in a proposal? Well, of course we do. Get a list of every lead generated last year and every proposal. Tick off all of those proposals that we count as having started with one of those leads. Now I know you can get into a bit of a dogfight here about influenced leads versus created leads, but as long as you use that same basic rule each time when you're comparing yourself year over year, it doesn't matter. That's all you need. Now, do we know how many meetings it takes to make a sale? Well, of course we do. Sit down with five different salespeople and get them to pull out their calendars for their last four sales. Count them up. And do we know our real closure rates? Sure. Get a list of every proposal that went out the door last year. Remove those that are still being worked on because we don't know whether we're going to win or lose. How many have been won? Wins divided by resolved proposals is your ratio. It's usually worse than the sales guys think. So that's the meat of it. For example, if you had to generate 100 sales in Q4 and you had a 50% propose to close ratio and your lead to proposal ratio was about 20%, meaning that one in every four of your leads actually generated a proposal, and it took five meetings to make a sale. Well, to get your 100 sales, you're going to need 200 proposals. And to get your 200 proposals, you're going to need about 1,000 leads. And for Q4's sales, you probably need those leads in Q3, because it takes a quarter to make a sale. So in Q3, we need 1,000 leads to generate 100 sales in Q4. Now, the meetings is a little bit trickier on a back of the envelope calculation like this. I'll show you later on a more scientific approach to this, but I'll give you a basic rule of thumb to work with for now. Now if we make 100 sales and it takes five meetings to make a sale, then we certainly know that we're going to need 500 or more uh, meetings. Five per sale, 100 sales, 500. But we're going to need some meetings for sales that don't go ahead. In fact, we know that we've got 200 proposals, so there's probably sales guys involved in, in, at that stage as well. So maybe it's more like 1,000, 200 proposals times five meetings to make a sale when you do make it. Then it gets a bit tricky around leads, so here's my basic rule of thumb. Take the number of leads, in this case it was 1,000, halve it, and multiply that by the number of meetings that it's going to take on the assumption that half of your leads require that quantum of meetings. Some leads need a couple meetings and they bail. Some of those leads need all five meetings. Just halve it. Now, it's not accurate. I've got a much better model for you a little bit later on. But let's stick with the basics. Propose to close ratio, lead to proposal ratio. It takes 13 weeks to make a sale, so we need 1,000 
leads in Q3 to make 100 sales in Q4 and we're going to chew up about 2,500 meetings across that period. There's the meat of it. Well, if that's the meat of the sandwich, where's the bread? We talked about those four basic ratios. If you're going to build a complete ratio, you probably also want two more little figures to factor in there. One would be how often does a positioned buyer become a lead? Because then I know how many buyers I need to position with. So we need one more number at the top, perhaps. And for absolute accuracy, we need something at the bottom as well. And that is, is there any kind of leakage from sale to revenue? In a lot of businesses there isn't because it's a product business. But in some businesses you sign a contract but you still don't get to invoice for a variety of reasons. So you might have a little bit of leakage at the last stage, but often you've got lag and it's a little bit of a trick. If in your business you measure the salespeople on revenue, then a signed contract is rarely revenue. There's something that has to happen between the signed contract and when the invoice hits the door. So you need to factor for that lag. And in the example before, if it takes 13 weeks to make a sale, but it then it takes another month before that sale converts to revenue, then we actually need to allow for a four-month window, not a three-month window. Small trick, a little bit of detail, and that's the whole sandwich. In a moment or two, I'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan. We're going to build a complete velocity model in the Funnel Plan. But before that, I'm going to do two things. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to do this on the back of, a, back of an envelope, as promised. And I'm going to invite you to receive more blogs like this. But let's get firstly to the back of the envelope calculation I promised you at the top of the video. How do we do that? Well, firstly, don't let complexity be the reason your team doesn't have a good handle on their funnel velocity. Simplify it until it does make sense. Then share and agree the straw man model. What's the control we're trying to beat? What is our current status quo in the funnel that we're trying to improve? Use that insight to manage your salespeople and your campaigns. Ask yourself constantly, why are we adding this campaign? Is it to get better at the top, better at the bottom, less friction in the middle, i.e. cost? Or are we just bored? Often we add campaigns because we're bored. But then hold every campaign and every salesperson to that improvement that you're trying to make to your status quo. Well, if you enjoyed this blog, then likely you'd enjoy others. If you haven't already, please go to mathmarketing.com forward slash blog and subscribe to either the twice a week blog or the once a month blog that comes out with a, a kind of lasso of all of the content once a month. If you've already done that, but you've got a colleague who hasn't, now might be the time to send them a quick email, invite them to subscribe at mathmarketing.com forward slash blog or to go to YouTube. Here's the address at YouTube where you can uh, listen to our channel. Once you do that now, then come back and I'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan. Okay, well the section of the Funnel Plan that this affects is of course the velocity model here in the middle of the Funnel Plan. Let's zoom in on that and take a look at the basic velocity model, which as you can see, paints a three-year picture of how many buyers we need to move through every single stage in the funnel. Now, we had some basic maths. Let's take a look in the funnel plan application. And you can see that if a quarter of our leads result in proposals, well, that requires a 37% leakage at each of three stages, trying to get to gap, trying to get to need, and trying to get to offer. So to get 200 proposals, we need something a little better than 300 needs, about 500 troubled buyers, and about 800 who showed interest. Now, if half of our proposals generate a sale, that's a 29% leakage at each of preference which is, if you like, best view, and closed. So, for example, 100 sales would need 140 preferences formed and 200 proposals. So the funnel plan takes your top line numbers, those four basic numbers, and applies them. 
and then it allows you to finesse them, but only if you want. If you want to get into the detail, you can. If you want to stick high level, you can. Personally, I like to start with the big picture, get into the detail, and check that my big picture still makes sense. And from that, we can produce a three-year velocity model to meet our sales targets. So in this example, we're looking at sales targets of about 1,400 sales over three years. By the way, if you're not generating a proposed to close ratio of one in two, but maybe more like one in five or more, the odds are very good that you've got your salespeople working on leads that are not yet well enough qualified. I'll show you how to fix that in another blog. But for now, may your funnel be full and always flowing.